Hey, what is up, everybody? Uh, once again, I'm Jesus Blackman of Average Joe Retix, and uh, today's video is a special request um, from a member of the Retic Keepers Facebook group page. Um, her name is Michelle Troutman. So, uh, she basically wanted me to do a video of um, some big snake myth that uh, she has heard or, you know, has been asked. So, I just want to do this quick video to, you know, help um, dispel some of these myths. Now, I'm going to try to keep it as short and sweet as possible, but there are a couple uh, questions here that require a, a in-depth uh, look into them. But still, I'm going to, you know, try to keep it, you know, short. So, the first question um, that she has, or the first myth that she has, is how people think that eight-foot cages for retics are too small for them, and they need something bigger. Now, these myths just really don't apply to retics. Um, they can apply really to any uh, large constrictor or almost any type of uh, exotic animal. But because these questions are really, you know, for a retic, we're going to, you know, uh, cover that part. So, cage space requirements. An eight foot cage is big enough to house, properly house, safely house, an adult retic. Female, male, doesn't matter. Um, I see a lot of people with, you know, cages where the cage is high. You know, they may have a six foot or eight foot long cage and have, you know, three feet in depth and four feet or more in height. You know, a snake doesn't need all of that height. A retic, you know, for that matter, really doesn't need all that height. Um, minimum requirements for a retic to be housed properly is six foot by 32 to 36 inches deep. You want it deep and by 18 inches high. That is minimum. You can stay at 18 inches high. Retics, like I said, don't need all that height. So anything, any Anything higher than 18 inches on your height is just really a waste of space. So, uh, let's take a look at what happens when a snake is given an enclosure that's big. And my helper today is going to be my head A male sun tiger, Tarzan. And as you can see behind me, the cage he's in right now is 6 foot by 32 inches by I think this one was made about 18 or 22 inches tall yeah I know as you can see the top cage I like to keep them short but that's just the way you know my friend made it um, I didn't really want to inconvenience him so that's just the way he made it really I don't need all that height but this is what happens when you give a snake a large enclosure And he's going to be my helper for, to, for this video. Uh, my lavender albino motley tiger is just eaten. And Gizmo, I don't really want to mess with her right now because she's too big and no one's here with me. So I'll stick with something that's kind of safe for me to deal with. So let's take the camera. And this is what happens when you give a snake an enclosure that's too big. Or I won't say too big, but large. Don't mind his paper. There's no poop in here or urine. He just likes to destroy it. But this is what happens. You get the snake coiled up um, in one corner of the cage. This snake is probably eh, pushing eight feet or more. I haven't gotten a real accurate measurement on him as of late. Um, but he's around the eight foot mark. But this is what he does. In this large cage, you know, I can easily lay down in this cage 
and have room and not be cramped. But this is what would happen if you gave a snake a room-sized or a large uh, enclosure. Now just imagine if this snake was 20 feet long and this cage itself was as big as your living room or dining room. This is exactly what that snake would do. It would find a corner and just chill in it. So, big snake, big cages are not really required for big snakes. Um, they won't utilize the entire enclosure. So, for adult retics, if you want to go eight foot long, that's perfectly fine. Um, but that really, to me, is the cutoff. I really don't see a person needing a ten foot or bigger enclosure to properly house a, a fully grown retic, be it male or female. Uh, because, like I said, you'll be wasting space. The snake will find one corner to sit in and probably only move to get some water or to go to the bathroom. So, that's basically what, you know, the cage requirements are for retics. Now let's go to the next question or next myth that she's heard or has been told. And that is, she's been asked by people if retics are venomous. Simple question, simple answer. No. Retics are not venomous. Um, they have no venom glands whatsoever. They are constrictors. The method of killing their prey is to grab and constrict or to tightly squeeze the animal or its prey or whatever it's going to eat and asphyxiate it. Uh, there used to be myths to where, you know, these snakes were so strong that they would crush bone and break bones. Um, it might be possible in smaller prey items, you know, say if you have a... Uh, a 20 foot retic and you're feeding it a chicken you know a chicken's bones are not like a human's bones or primates bones or other mammals bones birds bones tend to be hollow which allows them to fly so the bone breaking thing is not really is it's kinda on the fence it, I, I think it can happen uh, given the right circumstances given the right prey, where you have, you know, a prey item whose bones, you know, by nature are fragile. But on the same token, the animal usually dies, or the animal is killed by asphyxiation. What happens is the snake coils around the animal and squeezes. And every time that animal takes a breath, the snake squeezes harder. The, the grip gets tightened or tighter. And basically what that, that is doing, you know, physically to that animal, it's just stopping the ribs from expanding. You can't breathe if your ribs, you know, can't expand with your lungs. So, that animal dies of, you know, lack of oxygen, asphyxiation as they call it. So, venomous? No. Retics are not venomous. But with that being said... I have seen a person, it wasn't by a retic, I believe it was by a, uh, a garter snake or a king snake. I can't remember the exact species, but it wasn't a venomous species, and the person had an allergic reaction to the snake's saliva. Now, that can happen. People can have an allergic reaction to the snake's saliva. It's not venom. It's just that person, that person's physiological response to the snake's saliva in that, that wound. And the body starts to build up antihistamines because, you know, the person's having an allergic reaction. So I have seen that. But as far as venom, no. Retics are constrictors. They're not venomous. So let's go to the next question or the next myth that she's heard. And that is... All retics are aggressive. Now, 
that came about, excuse me, that myth came about in the late 80s, early 90s, really around that time, the 80s, 90s, when retic keeping uh, started to become more prevalent in the hobby. At that time, a lot of people were keeping boas, a lot of people were, people were keeping uh, Burmese pythons, and the retic hobby was just, you know, coming in, it was just being born. So, with that said, a lot of the retics that came in to the United States, or a lot of retics that people were purchasing at these pet shops, were wild court animals. And uh, naturally, a wild court animal is going to be aggressive and defensive. So, but then again, I don't like to say aggressive. As I said in my last video, well, a previous video, I don't believe retics are aggressive or really any snake for that matter I mean aggression to me is a, a behavior more suited to primates humans it's a it's an emotion that you know that person or that animal is setting out to do harm to another one that's aggression when it comes to retics and snakes we're dealing with animals who act purely on instinct, you know, people mistake, mistaken being defensive for aggression. If you open a snake's cage, you'll get one of two responses, most of the time. You'll get a feeding response, and you'll get a defensive response. Okay, those are the only two times. Now, what is the defensive response? You're coming into that snake's territory. It's going to be defensive. You, the snake may be at a young age to where its instincts are telling it that you are possibly a predator. Baby snakes are notorious for this behavior, for this defensive behavior. Because evolution and instincts are telling them that anything that is bigger than them will eat them. So they have to be defensive. There's no aggression really behind it. They're trying to, in their mind save their own lives. So you have an animal that's defensive, not aggressive. And as stated before, that was born really when the retic hobby were uh was, you know, just coming into coming into being and a lot of this the retics that were on the market and in pet stores were wild court animals. And I'm pretty sure you would be defensive if someone snatched you out of your house or out of your home and put you up for sale. So it's basically defense. It's not really aggression. They're not looking to hurt you. They just want to stop you from attacking them or eating them. It's basically it. Or stop you from taking over their territory. So, now with that said, let's get the next myth out of the way. And that is... That retics will only eat live feeders. I have heard instances of people who say, my snake will only eat live animals. Now, I've never had this problem. I've never, ha never had a, a snake that will only eat a live animal. But we know that myth to be false because many, plenty of keepers now, are feeding frozen thawed animals. And uh, to the people who snakes only feed on live animals, do your best to get that snake um, on frozen thawed. It's a lot better for the snake, it's a lot safer for the snake, as well as, you know, another animal doesn't have to suffer. We've been over this plenty of times, we've all heard it before. It's nature. That's what they do. They kill animals to eat. Yes, it is nature. But no, this here is not nature. This is captivity. We should hold ourselves to a higher standard. If we know these snakes will take frozen thawed animals or, de or dead prey, then why not feed them to them? For the people who snakes will only take live animals, 
like I said, do your best to get them on frozen thawed. It's, it's going to be hard. Like I said, I've never had the problem. So it's really something I really can't, you know, speak on as to, you know, how to solve that problem. But it can be done. It's a lot better for the snake. So with that one done, let's get to the next one. And I believe this is the last one, and it is, she's often asked, won't that snake kill you when you hold it? Now this is one that really needs to be, you know, kind of going to depth, and this is the reason why. And I'm sorry, I am sweating like a southern preacher here. This is my snake room, and <laughs> it is really, really hot. But... I get asked that question a lot too. And here is the truth about that myth. And the answer th to that is yes. I mean, let's not beat around the bush now. When you deal with or when you work with any animal, be it wild or domestic, there is an inherent risk of danger or serious bodily harm, or possibly, possibly even, even death. And I know people are going to watch this and say, well, what do you mean, domestic animals? Yes, domestic animals. Dogs, cats, and horses cause more severe injuries, more injuries, and more deaths in the United States than large constrictors combined. What does that tell you? You have a better chance of getting killed by a stray cat. Just based off of the, the diseases that they can carry. So when you work or you deal or you live around any animal, there's an inherent risk of danger. Um, when it comes to large constrictors, that's why handling the animal is number one priority and getting that animal accustomed to being handled so that way you don't have defensive defensive bites you don't you know have a food related uh, strike and constriction so that is why I recommended in my last video that everyone gets a snake hook and hook train your snakes properly you know I mean, will this guy here kill me at this size? No. But at a larger size, yes, yeah, quite possibly he could kill me. But that is why we handle our snakes safely. Number one rule, never let a snake, no matter how big, no matter how small, stick its face next to yours. And the reason being is you, you would never know if the carbon dioxide from your breath, the heat from your breath, or just, you know, just your breathing on it would, in that animal's mind, initiate a feeding response. And now you have a snake hanging off your face. Um, could this animal kill me? Yes, it could. But which is why we try not to... You know, scare the animal, so that way we get another defensive strike. And you always have someone around you. Now, I love my snakes. My girlfriend doesn't. So, it's kind of, you know, I have to choose the lesser of two evils. You know, I work with the snakes my, by myself. I handle them by myself. But with that being said, she is never more than an air shot away from me. I do not handle my snakes if she does not know what's going on. She's always told when I'm feeding. She's always told when I'm cleaning. And she's always in the room right above me, which is in 15 feet from me. So she'll hear if I call out for help. Or she'll hear me say, hey, I need some help. You know? So... Once again, can these animals kill you? Yes, they can. 
you know. But you have a better chance of getting killed by a dog or a cat or contracting rabies from a dog or a cat or getting killed by your, your horse than you do from a large constrictor. So, I hope that answered uh, her questions um, and answered any, you know, questions you guys might have had concerning these myths. Um, if you want me to go into, you know, other myths when it comes to snakes or reptiles, um, I'll be more than happy to. I'm always happy to help, you know, educate people on these animals. Um, I believe that, you know, research is key to when you keep these animals. So I try to put out as much helpful information as I possibly can. Um, so like I said, if you want me to do any more videos, just uh, post a comment um, in the comment box below. Let me know what myth you've heard or what myth, you know, people ask you. Because I get them all the time, you know. I can't tell you how many times I didn't have my snakes out on the lawn, especially my big 8 male tiger female. And, you know, I get, oh my god, can that snake kill you? Or is that a boa constrictor? Or is it poisonous? You know. And you'll hear that a lot of times too. And just for the record, there are no poisonous snakes. There are venomous snakes, there are no poisonous snakes. So the next time a person asks you, you can tell them that. And the reason being is, poison is something that has to be ingested. Venom is injected into the bloodstream. So, the next time you're asked that, you're out holding your king snake, or your rat snake, or milk snake, or retic, and someone asks you, are they poisonous? You can tell them no, and give them exactly the reason why. You know, so, once again, thank you for watching, guys. I'm going to put this guy back. It's hot as crap down here. So, once again, thanks for watching, and uh, stay safe and keeping your animals.